health insurance for humans. The quotes here is uh, juxtaposing humans with uh, Econs, to use the parlance that often is invoked in behavioral economics. But the idea is to think about information, frictions, uh, and then actually map that into how consumers make those decisions and potentially the welfare of their different choices. And I should say this is joint work with, with Ben Handel, who's at, at Berkeley. Um, so the top graph really motivates uh, the specifics of what we're working on. But more generally, this is motivated by the fact that almost all of the major health policy reforms have some form of consumer decision making in it. And so what we're really trying to do is dig into how consumers make those decisions and then try to be able to say something about are these good policies, bad policies, how might we affect that. But the top graph here, this laser pointer is going to be useless at this distance, but it's basically the rise of high deductible health plans, which is the specific kind of choice we're focused on in this project. But I should say this is the first of a large set of projects with a very large uh, employer in the US. They're interested in a variety of questions going forward, and so certainly feedback will be valuable here. Uh, and what you can see is that high deductible health plans now, even in, uh, in, in small firms, they've gone from 16% to 58% of people have at least $1,000 deductible in their health plan. So people have more skin in the game, but they have to decide between plans, but potentially more complicated financial uh, types of decisions. It's not quite as complicated as Part D necessarily that Ashley talked about. Um, but the motivator here is these two questions. And usually the, what economists think them, about them as being one. Why do consumers actually choose a given health insurance plan? And then how would they value that plan once they arrive in that plan, right? And so typically we take their choices of revealing some preference about it, but we're gonna actually try to differentiate these two questions and think about it a little more, uh, I won't deeply as normative, but uh, complexly. Um, and so I think the common model, right, basically says your decision are a function of risk preferences. So are my risk averse or not? Risk type, am I sick or not? And then we've had some extensions, particularly around networks where of course HMO decisions, that's really material. What we're trying to model in this paper is usually much harder to measure, which is uh, information or uncertainty about plan features. They're very complicated. You have lots of choices. Information or uncertainty about health risk, right? If we think about someone making a rational decision, they, we're assuming they're sort of projecting their likelihood of illness. That's complex. Um, hassle costs, so particularly with things like savings accounts that are total pain, um, that might be important. And then we're going to add in these sort of behavioral or heuristic models as well. And so the new approach we've, we've taken in this paper is combining uh, individual survey data. So we actually get micro survey data where people are asked the types of questions that they basically, can you answer questions that we would uh, assume you could if you were going to act in a rational or uh, optim rational way. Uh, and then it's actually linked to the individual data so we can take that and say, how, do, how at the individual level do decisions differ? amongst real decision makers depending on what kind of information they had. And I think this is a, a new and interesting way to actually measure this and allows us to distinguish choices from welfare that we can't usually do. So the basic idea I think is captured, uh, I hope this isn't too small, but by the top graph here, here you see on the x-axis it's uh, how much you totally spend at the end of the year. Uh, on the y-axis is the relative value of the high deductible plan versus the alternative, which literally covers everything, first dollar. It's one of the most generous plans I've ever seen. And so what you can see is if you're spending only a small amount, of course, it's a much better deal to be in the high deductible health plan because there's subsidies and there's tax preferred savings in the high deductible plan. As you go out, of course, uh, it becomes less good of a deal. But you'll notice that at the family level, you're maxed out, right? If you hit the out-of-pocket maximum, the most you can lose is $2,000. And so if you look after the fact, 35 to 7, depending on the assumption, 35 to 70 percent of the population would have been better off in the high deductible plan. Yet only seven and then eventually 15% of people ever chose that plan, right? And the standard model is going to, you know, the only thing you have left is going to say, look, these people must be really risk averse. They're very, very concerned. But our hypothesis is that that in fact might not be the case. It could be something to do with whether or not they understand the real value of these two different plans. Um, and the lower one, so what we did was basically administer a survey to a large section of the population in this company. And the lower graph, which is, again, a little hard to see, but I'll ex explain it hopefully, uh, it, it captures the basic idea, right? We're going to ask, they have literally the identical network. It's administered by the same benefit provider. But of course, we might think that, you know, you could say, well, this is less financially generous. I might also think there's fewer doctors. And so what we see is uh, about 20%, uh, only 50% of people can actually accurately identify that the networks are exactly the same, even though there was a, this isn't a complicated difference necessarily. Many are not sure, but 20% are in line with exactly this hypothesis. And what you see, this is the 
optimal decision, and this is the actual choices. And what you can see is when you can report the left-hand column that they're the same, again, there's still some under deciding of, to go into the uh, high deductible plan, that's the lower bar, but it's much, the difference between the two columns is much lower for that group. And if you take it to the data, you actually see that the average person left $2,200 on the table to access this hypothetical network, even though they were exactly the same after the fact. So we take this to the data and the top graph really captures the main results. So we incorporate this, this detailed survey data as we go forward. And if you look at the base model, that's the standard model. And the blue numbers I'll draw your attention to are basically the gamble interpretation. So that's how much could I lose in order to try to win $1,000 upside. And so $366 is basically like being paid $640 on average to take the risk. You're very, very risk averse. As we layer in the information, what you see is we actually find that people are much, much less risk averse once they're fully informed. And the distinction and the interesting one is that in fact, including both inertia and information frictions, we see that uh, in fact, basically people are, are getting close to risk neutral. And so the optimal policy is gonna be very, very different in fact people who are informed would be much uh, less worse off uh, in going into a high deductible plan. And so the implications for policy are very, very different. And we're hoping to extend this into a number of different directions, including potentially a Medicare setting and other choices.